All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to present a really cool integral with an even cooler substitution. Namely, the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over square root of x times 1 over square root of 1 minus x dx. Just a little bit of background story on that. I was watching one of my videos on the Gaussian integral, and it turns out in one of the videos I calculated that integral. But, which I completely forgot about, you know, with the passing of time. And it's so neat, I figured I should make the own, my own video on that. So, let's calculate this square root of 1 minus x. That should remind you of square root of 1 minus sine squared. So how about we just use a substitution, x equals sine squared of theta. Then what happens? Let's calculate dx. dx just becomes 2 sine of theta cosine theta. So just the usual Chen Lu. Then next, let's figure out the endpoints. So if you have x equals 0, what happens? 0 equals sine squared of theta, which gives you sine of theta equals 0. And the easiest angle which satisfies that is simply theta equals 0. On the other hand, let's see what if we plug in x equals 1, then we get 1 equals sine squared of theta. And that gives you uh, sine squared, uh, it gives you, sorry, sine equals plus minus 1. And don't quote me on that, but I think in the end for this answer, it doesn't matter if we do plus 1 or minus 1, so let's just do plus 1. Just to make things easy, and that gives you theta equals pi over 2. And in particular, theta is between 0 and pi over 2, so it is in the first quadrant, which will be useful actually right now. because. What is square root of x? Well, it's square root of sine squared theta. But square root of sine squared is just absolute value. So it's absolute value of sine of theta. But in the first quadrant, sine of theta is non-negative. So in the end, this just becomes sine of theta. And what about square root of 1 minus x? Well, that becomes square root of 1 minus sine squared of x. And just like one direction says, that's what makes it beautiful, because what makes this beautiful is uh, that this simplifies. So this just becomes square root of cosine squared theta. And again, it's absolute value of cosine of theta. But because we're in the first quadrant, this is just cosine of theta. Last but not least, what happens here? So this integral just transforms into the integral over our new endpoints, 0 and pi over 2. 1 over square root of x, that's 1 over sine of theta. 1 over square root of 1 minus x, that's 1 over cosine of theta. And here's the nice thing. Remember dx was 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta, again, d theta. And then what do we get? Bang, bang. This simplifies. And so in the end, you're left with the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 2, d theta. But that's just 2 times pi over 2. And the answer is as delicious as pi. So in the end, this integral is just equal to pi. How cool is that? Alright, if you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.